all right, you ought to put your hands together one more time. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Thank God for another day. Today is Thanksgiving. I thank God, um, thank God for family. A amen. Thank God for not just a Thursday fellowship with family, but always a constant fellowship. And either they coming or they calling. And when we don't see them, I have to call and say, hey, tell, tell the crew they need to come on. I need to look in their face. Value family. The stronger the family, the stronger the church. You want a weak church, have a weak family. Amen. So we thank God for the opportunity of fellowship. So I, I want to, uh, on today, I want to um, continue dealing with Thanksgiving. Amen. I'm not going to hold you long. So if you have your Bibles with you, go with me to the gospel of uh, St. Luke, chapter 17. Sister Tiffany, if you don't mind, take me up to, take me up one verse, okay? What did I give you, 12? Take me up to 11. Luke, the physician. I want uh, to greet everybody in the name of the Father, His Son, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for all our officers, our ushers. Thank God for our mayor quite this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our musicians. I still say we, we are so gifted to have some of the best musicians. Amen. Thank God for the atmosphere that they set. Thank God for our mothers, our senior saints. Thank God for all the men and the women of God, whether here with me on the roster or those in the audience. Thank God for all my family that is here, my wife, amen, and our baby girl and our other daughters are in the thing. You have an amen? Y'all excuse me for not greeting you. I got a little bug, and I don't want nobody to get sick, okay? So peace, I love you. Thank you, man. For those that are physically able and spiritually obedient, let us stand in reference to the reading of the word of God. I'm beginning at verse number 11, follow along with me as I read aloud. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain city or certain village, there met him ten men that were leopard, which stood afar off. And they lift up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, some um, translations say as they walked, as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, <laughs> glorified God. Watch, watch this. And the glory got so good, he fell out on his face at his feet. Listen, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And when Jesus answered, answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give, to give glory to God, save this stranger. Last verse. And he said unto him, Get up. Go your way. By faith. 
has made you whole. You may, you may be seated. Just for a few minutes, and I promise, if the Spirit of the Lord will lead in God, I, I just want to um, leave this thought in your mind, a thankful life. Thankful life. Thursday is gone. Some of our loved ones are traveling back home. And as you can look around in the sanctuary, some of our church family are still out, prayerfully with a safe return. We feasted on food. Thursday, hopefully with family and with friends. We reminisced in the midst of all of them, talking about the things that God had done. Some of us even made a circle and talked about what we were thankful for. But I come to find out that there's a difference between thanksgiving and a thankful life. For sometimes when you're just dealing with thanksgiving, you only talk about the thing that you got. But a thankful life always talks about what you can give. Now that the turkey is now a caucus or turkey salad, Mr. Hester, the banana pudding with the strawberries is gone. The dressing, we don't know what to do with it because if we leave it out or warm it up another day, the onion's going to spoil, so this really isn't good. But in the midst of everything that we feasted with, there should have been a feast on the inside of you. For God, through all these years, have taken good care of us. And the least we can say on a daily basis to show some type of appreciation is to tell him thank you. That things are not the way we want them to be, but we can be thankful that they are, not wor they are not worse than they really are. That I know that as we get older, even myself, Evangelist Bell, and some of us others that are over that milestone of 50, we have some aches and some pains. We have some stuff on us that hurt that we didn't even know could hurt. But every time we feel a pain, you ought to just know that I'm alive and I thank God that because I am alive, I can even lift my, even lift my hand, tell God, God, I can still thank you for the pain. We've seen some storms. We've seen some rain. We've had to cry sometime, and we've witnessed sleepless nights that nobody heard, nobody came to see, nobody checked on. But in the midst of it all, something just felt like it wrapped their arms around us rocked us and gave us the type of peace and the type of joy that we were looking for on the outside, but he planted it on the inside. And for that, we ought to just say thank you. Yes, we have crazy kids, but at least our crazy kids still have hope because we serve a God that is able that if he can change us, we know he can change them. And sometimes you have to thank God before he even does a thing. And so I am, I, I am convinced that the church has to get back in the mode of just being thankful no matter what it is. No, no matter what it's not, you ought to be in a mode that you can still be thankful. So what if the car is on E? At least you got the title to it. I can give you some reasons just to be thankful. And the sad reality of it is this story that we read is a story, really, of being thankful. That in this story, you find 10 people with the same condition, same situation, and each one of them, at the same time, has an encounter with Jesus. Can, can I tell you, everybody that called on him really don't want him. 
That's a whole, that's a whole nother sermon by, by itself. Every, listen, every hand clap in church ain't for Jesus. Some, some folk clapping because they get caught up in the excitement, but there are a few of us in here that sometimes we can't help but to clap our hand when we think about the dangers and the storm that the Lord brought us out. We don't mean to get on your nerve, but when I think about how good God has been to me, I ought to be able to either make some noise, clap, holler, scream, and even when I do that, it still ain't enough. See, I know your life been on the, on the bright side and you've been on the mountain all your life, but there are a few of us that has some gratitude for God because we've been stuck in the valley. We had some storms that we had to go through. We've been sleepless. We've been hungry. We've been homeless. We had to walk to work. We didn't know where our next meal was going to come from, but some way, somehow, God opened the door and made a way out of nowhere. And the least we could do when we come together is I tell my story, you tell your story, and when we get together and get through telling our story, that we lift up our voice and say, Lord, I just thank you. And when we realize that the person that we are thanking is responsible for everything that we are, We'll learn to stop complaining that there's not a problem that he can't solve. There's not a storm that he can't bring peace to. There's nothing that is separated that he can't put back together. Y'all, what? Don't need to pray. There's nothing that our God can't do. And a lot of times we hold ourselves up from God doing what he wants to do because we won't say thank you. I'm going to show it to you. It's in the text. Ten leopards see Jesus coming, and the news is out that Jesus is healing folk, and he's unstopping deaf ears, and he's loosening tongues, though people can talk, and he's making folk that can't walk, walk, and they thinking within themselves, ten of them, they think within themselves that if he can do it for them, Listen, you, you, you need to stop right there because don't think your situation is hopeless because if God did it for somebody else and he has no respect to a person, then he can do it for you too. No, no, there are no big eyes and no little use. Oh, let me bless you. We're all God's children. Yeah, listen, I'm, listen, don't, don't hate on nobody because they got a car. God got a lot of cars. Who she thinks she is with her weed? Wait, wait a minute. They make a lot of weed. And the sad reality of it is these ten leopards find themselves because the law of Moses says that any time there are leopards encountered, they had to let folk know that you don't want to get close to me because I have an infectious disease. So they would always have to say, unclean, unclean. They are labeled that people got to stay away and they could not go into the general population. They had created these things which are called leopard colonies. These ten leopards are together, but they're different. For you have nine that are one nationality, but you have one that is different. Let me show you. You have nine that are from Galilee, but you have one that, are, that is from Samaritan. Here it is. The Galileans and the Samaritans are cousins that fell out. They are related, but they don't fool with each other. And the reason why the Galilean don't fool with the Samaritan is because the Galilean think that they're better because they're of Jewish heritage. Now, here, here it is. They have an encounter, and I want you to see what they ask Jesus. They says, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Y'all missed it. 
They're in the same situation. And the Bible says, they said collectively, Master, have mercy on us. Y- y'all got that? But you missed the word. It says that they lifted up their voice. They elevated their voice to Jesus just to have mercy. Jesus don't touch him. He says to them, according to the law, go show yourself to the priest. The priest's job was to examine to see are you really healed. And the Bible says that as they walked, they, they hadn't got to the church yet. The Bible says that as they walked, God, some stuff God will do for you before you get to church. No, no, y'all, y'all, y'all missing this. Listen, listen, because when you can go out on the word and the will of God, just do what he say do, because they were on their way, and while they were on their way, they were not deterred. They say, you know what? If Jesus say go, I'm just going to go. While they were on their way, they were healed. The next verse says, and one of them. And a tenth of them said, you know what? Him looked at him hands. And his hands were new. Because y'all, y'all come on, don't make he looked at his feet. And, and, and they, they were too. And the Bible says what he ends up doing here, not going to the church. He went to Jesus. Wait, wait, y'all, 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 miss, y'all, y'all, y'all miss that. He said, if I stepped out on the word to get it, I need to go back to the word and show him that left. Just because I stepped on your word and I believe what you said, everything you said happened in my life. Three things the text teaches us about having a thankful life. Can can I give it to us? The three things that I see in the text is the first thing, if we're going to have a thankful life, we got to walk humbly before God. Watch what happens. He prays to God that God would have mercy. God supersedes his expectation. See, y'all missed it. He didn't ask to be healed. The text says they ask for mercy. They ask, don't let us get what we deserve. In other words, we don't deserve to be healed, healed, but if you give us mercy, we can live with the situation that we in. Boy, I wish I could talk to somebody right now that if God if God just continue to have mercy with us, can I tell you, we can endure whatever storm that comes in our life. You don't need a lot of stuff, but can I tell you what you can't do without? You cannot do without mercy. Oh, y'all don't believe me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of Jesus Christ, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Hold y'all. Come on, tell y'all. So if I'm standing, I'm standing by the mercies. If I'm living, if I'm breathing, I'm breathing by the mercy. It's not that I'm good, but the mercy of God endures forever. Okay, let, let me catch them old folk. They say, why we ask for mercy? Because mercy. So, oh, can, can I tell you, mercy suits all our cases. Yeah, yeah, you already know there's some stuff that should have took you out there. There's some stuff you shouldn't have walked away from. But the mercy of God is the reason that you're still here. No, it ain't because you're saying it. ain't because we teach it. ain't because we preach. It's the mercies of God. I want, you to, I want you to see how his thankful living causes him to be humble. 
The first thing he does when he gets to Jesus, the Bible says, and he glorifies God. He didn't thank the nine. He didn't go by and thank mama. Listen, for everything that God does, he does it so that nobody gets his glory. And sometimes we get caught up in our flesh and we give glory to the wrong people. Because certain folk, if they had their choice, you wouldn't have woke up this morning. Lord knows you wouldn't have came to the house of worship. And the least we ought to do when we enter his presence is to give him glory. No, no. Watch. Uh, he, he gets in the presence of Jesus, and he gives him glory. My God, watch the mix there. He didn't give him money. He didn't give him a song. He didn't quote no scripture. He gives him what he's due. Can, can I bless you? When we come together on Sunday, do you understand what Sunday is about? It is not about the word. It's about the glory of God. And once the glory of God is revealed, then the illumination and the revelation of the Holy Scripture causes our eyes to be open. Because it is the glory that brings revelation. God, I would... No, no, y'all y'all need to hear me. It's the glory that make us have spiritual understanding. It is the glory that brings about the knowledge of how awesome and powerful and how big God really is. You want to know why people have a little praise? Because they've only experienced a little glory. Anybody in here ever been sick? I'm talking about showing up. Show no, 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 no. I'm talking about showing up, showing up. Watch this. See, these are the folks that ain't ashamed to say, you know what? I know who healed me. And, and so when, when they get sick again, it's no problem on who they're going to give glory to be even before he bring them out. Watch this. Because folk that understand who heals them, who delivers them, who watches over them, has no problem giving him glory. What? Um, what the one that came back, didn't realize in his flesh was something happened not just on the outside of him. It happened, y'all, can, can, I, can I prove it? Because flesh and blood can't give God glory. He thought he was going back to tell him thank you because he made him look new on the outside. But if any man, here, here, here it is, because when they start talking about he's a new creation, he's not talking externally. The new creation is the inner man. God. And so what the leopard had experienced is the fact that there was something on the inside of him to say, you know what, since he did something on the outside, he had to put something on the inside, and what he put on the inside is what he want from you. Go back and give him some glory. If he woke you up this morning, you ought to give him some glory. If you got here safe and sound, you ought to give him some glory. If you got the right portion of your mind, you ought to give him some glory. I got to get you out. Watch. If I'm going to have thankful life, I have to be humble. The nine Watch this. Have to ask the questions that Jesus asked. Were there not nine? Okay. Jesus said, I might can't spell, but I can show count. What watch this? The question that the church has to ask, Keith, where were the nine? Where did the nine go? Y'all don't never can, can I tell you where they went? The nine went 
to the priest. Because Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Where did they go to the temple at? Well, we know for a fact that they didn't go to Samaria because they were from Galilee. Watch this. In their mind, they don't have to go and thank Jesus. Can I show you why? Where is Jesus from? He's from Galilee. So they knew Jesus. And they are thinking that their association entitled them to get what Jesus had and not go back and say thank you, God. Don't act like you don't have no children like that, that they're ungrateful, that they figure just because they're your children, they are entitled for you to do what you do without them saying thank you. No, can, can I bless you? I know I got my baby girl in here too. Can I bless you? I don't have to do nothing but love you. Oh, you don't believe me? The Bible said, oh, no, man, nothing but to love them. Yeah, the nine thought that because they hung in the same hood and their families knew each other that Jesus had to do it. But, but, but can I bless you? I didn't come to preach. Uh, I didn't come to preach to the Gentiles. You know, because the Gentiles feel like they can work for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that the songs and the prayers move God. That God is not moved by songs and prayers, especially if there is no genuineness and no thankfulness and no gratefulness in the heart. God is not moved by high sound to the naked ear. He's looking for a sweet savor in the spirit realm. The nine. Watch this. I want to show you something. The nine can't say thank you until they get to the church. It's right, it's right here in the text. But the Samaritan don't need a church atmosphere to say thank you. <laughs> Second point, to be thankful you ought to be able to bless God where he bless you. Ah, y'all missed it. You ought to be able to say thank you anytime God, if he blesses you on your job, you ought to be able to say thank you. If he bless you in your house, you ought to be able to say wherever God blesses you at, that's where you thank him at. Here, here, here it is. Here it is. Watch. The nine needed the platform of the show. That's why they went to church. Because they wanted to say thank you around some other folk. That went over somebody's head. Can, can I bless you? Sometimes God does so much for me. I can't wait till Sunday to tell God thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's. I can't wait and get on the phone and call somebody tomorrow. I need you to help me. Listen, I'm just like this Samaritan. I can thank God all by myself. I don't need a crowd. I don't need to be pumped. I don't need to be primed. I don't need a musician. I can thank God when I think about how good God has been to me. Watch. I want y'all to see something. The nine are in the temple. The one is with Jesus. Y'all still missed it. The nine is in a place. The one is with a person. Which suggests to me that Jesus ain't everywhere people clapping. It's right here in the text. If they went to the temple and Jesus is where they blessed them, where would you rather be? I would rather be where Jesus is than to be around a whole bunch of folk because when it's just me and him, he knows my heart and he knows the sincerity of my thank you. I want to show you something then I'm out. Uh, and the sad part of it is some folk only say thank you when they hear somebody else say it. Okay. 
I ain't talking about nobody in friendship, but some folk only say amen if the person next to them said amen. L listen, listen. You ain't no mockingbird. And Lord knows you ain't no par parrot. L let me tell you, if you can just think about one thing that God has ever done for you, L listen, even if nobody on your pew say nothing or do nothing, I suggest that you just open up your mouth and say, God, I just thank you. I got to say hallelujah because I got one thing on my mind that I know didn't nobody do but you. Can, can I bless you? The crowd ain't always popular. Watch. Um, and one of them returned. Y'all got your Bibles open? Can, can I teach Bible for about two, three minutes? When the ten when the ten hollered out, the Bible says, and they lifted up their voice. Y'all got me? All right. When you get down um, to verse 15, look at what it says. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, returned with a loud voice. Ten had a lifted voice. One, yo, y'all, y'all, <laughs> which means his praise was louder than his prayer. Y'all missed, that, that went over somebody. <clears throat> that when you are living a thankful life, when God answers your prayer, your prayer being answered ought to cause you to open your mouth. It, don't, don't you see it right here? When he realized he was healed, listen, he held his thank you, his hallelujah, and his glory until he got to the person responsible for his deliverance. He lifted up his voice and glorified God. I want you to watch something out of here. Watch. He fell down on his face. At Jesus' feet and thanked him. Y'all with me? The glory was so overwhelming. Listen, if you can never give him glory, you will never get to Thanksgiving. Y all, y all, am I making sense? When you experience his glory, you can't do anything but be thankful. And you don't have to explain why you're at a level of being thankful once you experience the glory. <laughs> See, some folk get the excitement and the antics of church, but others know how to go into the glory of God, okay, the Shekinah glory. I'm, I'm talking about when things are revealed that does not make sense to the carnal mind. Some folk really, literally knows how to get into the presence of God that even if nothing else changed, as long as I'm giving him glory and I'm in commune and fellowship with him, as soon as his presence takes a step back, it calls me to fall down and to give him thanks. What am I thanking him for? Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for giving me peace. Thank you for giving me joy. Thank you for keeping my children. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for healing. That. What am I thanking him for? I can thank him for everything. Uh, um, so watch this and we go. I promise. We're not till 10 gone. Here's the thankful life. Not only does a thankful life keep us humble, not only does it cause us to bless God where God blesses us, but lastly, thankful life 
causes us to return to him. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Watch this. He goes back. Jesus asked him, we're not that 10, but where are the nine? Where are they? Ain't nobody found to return, to give glory to God except this, far, this, far, this foreigner? Watch this. Now, this is just for the people here. Don't, don't go spread this. Listen, I want y'all to see what happened. Ten went the other way. One got the same thing the ten got, but he went to Jesus. He didn't need him. He didn't need nothing, but he went to Jesus. <sighs> See, y'all, y'all, that went over somebody's head. He went back not asking for nothing, but he went back. Church folk, when they get into crisis, will always come to church. But why come when something broke? Why not come when everything going well? Why not come when you got a clean bill of hell? Why not come when you still getting 40 hours? Why not come when your children are acting fine? Why something got to be broke in order for you to come? He didn't need nothing. He showed up without a motive or an agenda. Why did he show up? Lord, you've been so good to me. Little old God, y'all missed it. You've been so good to me that you did something for me that I couldn't do for myself. And if thou withdraw thyself from me. Uh, Jesus had a conversation with his disciples. And he says, and they were saying, uh, Jesus was trying to send them away. They was like, Lord. Where we gonna go? For you have the words. No, no, y'all missed that. To eternal life. They, in other words, they said, no, we, we don't got a touch of this right here. And, and look, I ain't going nowhere. Listen, don't wait till things fall apart to seek his face. Seek his face while he can yet be found. Uh, and isn't it funny? 90%. Only wanted what they could get. One per ten percent had something to give. Keep keep what he had. He had glory. But look, he had a thank you. I ain't, I ain't talking about one of them. Thank you. No, I'm talking about one of them for real. Lord, I just, Lord, I just thank you, God. I mean, sometimes I roll over in the middle of the night. My hip here here. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I've learned, I've really learned how to in all things give thanks. Cause that's all God really wants is, is his people just to tell him thank you, yo. Listen, when Keon, when Keon was about 10, he came to me right before Christmas. He said, Daddy, you hadn't bought me a bicycle since I was a little boy. Daddy, will you buy me a bicycle? And I said, you didn't take care of the other one. So, of course, y'all know we're going to tell him. But, Daddy, if you get this one, I'm going to take care of it. I said, okay. I said, now, you're a big boy now, so I'm going to have to get you one with a kickstand, and I don't want the bicycle laying down. And when I get ready to go, I don't want to have to get, make sure I don't run over the bicycle that I bought you. And he said, Dad, I'm going to take real good care. I'm going to have it on the kickstand, and I ain't going to put it behind your truck. He said, Dad, I'm going to take real good care of it. And um, after Christmas Day, I get up the next morning, and the bicycle is behind my truck, laying on the ground. And so I go in the house, and I wake him up. I say, where your bicycle? He says, outside. I said, is it behind my truck? He said, I don't think so. I said, is it standing up on the kickstand? I think I did put the kickstand down. And I said to him, I said, come outside. He came out. I said, there's the bicycle. 
I said, Keon, I said, you ain't even grateful. 24 hours later, after I bought the bicycle and you started riding, y'all want to know what he said? Dad, I told you thank you yesterday. See, y'all, 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 y'all missed it. Y'all missed it because sometimes you can't just tell God thank you, but every time he's put it on your mind and put it in your heart, you can tell him thank you for 10 years ago. You can tell him thank you for last week. God never gets tired of folk that have a grateful heart. If he healed you, you can tell him. God, it's been 15 years, and I'm still healed. I'm still delivered. I'm still set free. It it doesn't matter. It's when it comes to mind. He says, now, listen to what he tells him. Um, Go your way. Your faith. Somebody with no Jewish tie gave thanks. And had more faith than nine other men with the same condition. You have to ask yourself, am I the one that when God heals me, that I'm going to turn around just to go and tell him thank you? I ain't going to wait till Sunday. If God does something this afternoon that I couldn't do for myself, guess what? I'm going to open up my mouth and say, God, I just want to thank you. If you wake up in the morning, you didn't wake you. Wake up giving him glory and saying, Lord, I thank you for a brand new day. I've learned how to thank God for everybody that likes me, loves me, and hates me. Y'all missed it. You have to learn how to thank God for stuff that's uncomfortable and things that hurt and things that, but God, I thank you because I understand. You want to know, will I say thank you in this? Yes, I will because I understand that this is the will that you have for my life. Some folk, when they go, you ought to just fall down on your knee, get to kick it, and say, Lord, I thank you that they gone. I thank you that they left me alone. I feel better. Let's live. Let's live a life that no matter what happens, we can thank God. Listen, he knows what's best for us. You know our only requirement after Jesus Christ, can can I tell you, is to thank God. When he says it's finished, all we got to do is say thank you. For real. It's the most situations going to happen that you don't understand and don't like, and it's not going to be favorable. Yeah. But no matter what, can you say thank you? That God, you handled that situation. I know for a fact you can handle this one. What the old folks say, through many dangers, I have already, t'was grace that bought me safe, and we're what? So if I'm going to go home, I, ain't, I might as well say thank you while I'm going. Looking unto Jesus, the author of what? He wrote the book. And if you read the book, you'll find out you're going to be fine and you're going to come out on top. God bless you. I love you.